Okay. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm just in the middle of two events. That's why I'm dressed in my uniform. Uh, so, so I'm going to Avesta and have uh, another event there uh, later today. Uh, World Orienteering Day, it is coming up in my mind from many years ago. But uh, it started really in something about a vision, about how can we really be a strange sport, in, uh, great sport in the future. And then I think uh, we need a lot of small fires everywhere in the world. Therefore, act locally, but you have to think globally. So if you have a body like uh, IWF organization, we can have uh, some kind of information out to this kind of burning p people. And I think from this network we have today, we have so many people out there in the, in the world who really is, they are really burning for our sport. And they are so important for, to increase and improve our sport. Uh, everything started 2012 in Lausanne when we got the World Champs to Sweden in Strömstad. And this, it works sometimes. <laughs> uh, we, we said that we need to have some kind of a project together with the World Champs to have some kind of national uh, things to do in, in Sweden. Uh, and we have a lot of ideas how we can uh, uh, improve that kind of uh, working together. Uh, and then we start school sprinting. School sprint is a project in the school, uh, in some schools in Sweden, uh, running by me. And uh, April, May, uh, April 11, last year, uh, the council took a decision in Istanbul that they will have World Orienting Day on board uh, during uh, IOF body. And during the winter, we start to work with it. Uh, World Orienteering Day. Uh, we uh, had an, some kind of um, competition uh, and uh, we had a lot of uh, proposal about what the logger types should be and a guy from Indonesia, he was a winner and this is the logger we are using for uh, everything now. Um, we have done a lot of uh, uh, wood news, or wood info, so on, on the net, on the website you can find uh, at the moment, four different kind of uh, news where we try to uh, get examples from uh, all countries worldwide, what you can do this day. So the thing is that you should do some kind of orienteering, but it can be whatever. It can be day orienteering, night orienteering, can be in the forest, can be in the urban terrain, whatever. But it should be with map. So I have uh, two guys, one in Turkey and one in Brazil, they're working with blind people, so have a tactile map. Uh, so there are a lot of different kind of uh, events going on today. Uh, can take next one. Uh, we have some kind of vision to why why are we, why are we doing this kind of uh, work with World Orienteering Day. The main thing is that orienteering should be more visible and also more. Uh, available for people. So how can we get people in our sport? And I think the link between the club, the federations and the school is really important both for uh, the school education but also for our sport to, to recruit more people. So if we can do that kind of work during 10 years, we can change the approach of volunteering. So when I come to school and you ask for how many, is, how many of you are running volunteering, they should be, I am. But today they say, I am. But if, if you're a football player, I am Slatan. But tomorrow, my, my daughter will say, I am Ida. Um, we also want to have more countries on board in IOF. We need more countries worldwide. And in this project, we have a lot of new countries coming in. And that is really fun. Uh, orienteering should be fun, cool, awesome, but also educational. So this is one of the reasons. Uh, so the target was to have uh, each club have a contact with at least one school worldwide. This is a really big, big vision. But the vision should be there, because if everyone who is running in a club can some kind of work with, with a school, we can increase in, in many, many ways. So this year, 2,000 locations. We have a moment 2,319. This is an updated figure. <laughs> uh, and uh, we need to have more maps around 
the school because the urban terrain is so e easy to use for uh, education and to recruit people. And here's, here in Sweden, we have a lot of many people coming from other countries, uh, and they are they are really afraid of the forest until they have got the tools to do volunteering by uh, school maps and so on. Yep. Uh, it's just some example of what, what, what vision can be. Uh, we had a vision to have a world Guinness, a Guinness World Record. Uh, and uh, I can say that in the end, we don't need Guinness World Record. But maybe they need us instead. Because just to, to use them as a partner is so expensive. We need to pay more or less 3.5 million Swedish crown to get them involved, because we have need to pay them for each country. So I think they need us in the, in the end. Uh, there is a record, a world record in the Guinness work from 2003 in Switzerland, that they did a really good work, uh, because they had a World Champs 2003. So they were, they were really working with all schools in Switzerland. So that amount, with 227,000 runners or youngsters was running uh, during one day. It is an amazing figure in one country. Uh, and we can beat that with a quarter, quarter million in the, in the whole world. It should be a quite easy piece to do. But in the end, I think in two, three years, maybe uh, or next year, we have maybe a one million youngsters running during this day. Because I, th I think we, kill, we will get Switzerland on board, we will get Finland more on board, we will get Sweden more on board, and so on. Okay, we uh, have it on a website, and this is from yesterday. Uh, and uh, this is the registration of locations, and here is the uh, participation, and that will be increasing all the time. And um, today we, are, we have uh, 70, 77 countries or new. Uh, national members of, of IOF, uh, but we have a lot around 80 territories. Maybe there are a little bit more today. Um, this is the map as you show, uh, Brian. And um, so every dot on the map, they are red. But if you do a marker on that one, that will be blue. And you have information about uh, that, that event. And when you do the registration, that event will be green, so we can follow it, red, blue, or green. Uh, in the morning, Canberra, 6.20 a.m. local time, we had a 9 to in the morning. We know we have winter down there at the moment. Uh, so we're hard, strong girls and boys running out there, 16 people in the forest. But they were first, and that, that was the goal for them, to be the first event in this World Orienteering Day. David Poland by Canberra. A lot of different kind of advertising has been. This is from, Fran from France and also from, this is from Egypt. And e Egypt is a new country. And the new countries who, who has been coming in IOF, like Egypt, Turkey, they are really on. They are so hot. They are working so hard to get, uh, to get the recruitment in the country. Next year will be uh, May 24th and 2018, the May 25, 20, 23. Uh, and it will be um, uh, also Wednesday because we, we want to have, or I want to have, a weekday. Because I think uh, if we should be working with schools, we should do that uh, during the week, not in the weekend. Okay, many thanks, and please go on and uh, be part of a World Winter Day, even as an event runner, so you still have a chance to do it. And I will now leave for Avesa.